Hi guys, it's me Nabu here and welcome back to Nabu's 90s. I am so thankful and grateful for you guys for tuning in. If you're new to my, my little episodes, welcome. Um, Roshi will be back on Saturdays to do anthro anime stuff. So um, let's get started with today's Nabu's 90s pick. So today I want to do uh, one of my all-time favorite movies from my childhood and that involves a couple things. Can you guess what it is? It's got turtles, it's got ooze, it's got teenagers, it's got mutants. If you haven't put it together right now, it is Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Yay! Oh my gosh. That movie was like really defining for me when I was a kid. I had not only watched the show, which was out in the 80s, but I also had all of the merchandise. I had a lot of the toys that were going on. So for me, this movie was definitely a dream come true. So let's get started talking about Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles was released March 30th, 1990. It was directed by Steve Barron. The studio that released it was New Line Cinema. The budget was $13.5 million and it went on to gross over $200 million worldwide. The film was loosely based off the comics and the cartoon show that was airing at the time. The premise for the sh actual film was that it takes place in New York City. Um, and instead of typical gangs, uh, there are an element called foot ninjas that are led by Master Shredder, who is evil and wants to take over the city. He comes into opposition with the Turtles um, through April O'Neil, who was a news reporter that reported on the foot soldiers and was attacked in the subway. She was saved by the Turtles, and she then became friends with them and decided to help them along their journey in rescuing their own master, which is Master Splinter, as well as defeating the evil foot soldiers and Master Shredder. So let's talk a little bit about the 1990 version of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. For those who aren't um, familiar with the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, uh, it involves four turtles. Yeah, Michelangelo, Donatello, Leonardo, and Raphael. Yeah, Leonardo, the leader of the turtles and closest to Splinter, Donatello, the brains of the turtles, Raphael, the rebellious and angry turtle, and Michelangelo, the youngest and fun-loving party turtle. And um, they had a master that was a rat named Splinter. So they all originally were regular animals. Um, this takes place in New York. They were in a subway in New York as small animals and somehow toxic waste got spilled onto them and they began to grow and began to be able to have intellect and uh, Splinter the rat raised the four baby turtles and taught them ninjutsu. So that's how they kind of uh, were able to get like their ninja type abilities was from their master who was a rat. And Master Splinter trained under his master through his cage. He would watch his master do martial arts. And that's how he picked it up. Uh, so that's kind of the general gist of how they became Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. This was actually a really unique film for that time frame. The costumes that are worn are actual practical costumes made by Jim, H Jim Henson Studios. It was actually one of the final films that he made before his passing. He actually passed away. Um, shortly after the movie premiered. This is also one of the most difficult um, creature setups that he's ever done. So when you're looking at these turtles in the film, it's actually three people portraying each turtle. So you have an actual actor that's in the suit. You have a puppeteer that's working the facial features of the suit. And then you have a voice actor that's producing the voices of each actor. So it's pretty unique in that you, you get three people portraying one person, which is it's crazy that they were able to match everything up and make it look good. But that's, that's what it was. Um, it took the Jim Henson Studios 18 weeks just to create the Ninja Turtle costumes. Uh, once everything was completed, 
Um, I think it was halfway through their production before they actually got a studio to help distribute the movie. And at the time, it was a little known, small, um, really small distribution company that was known for doing like B-type movies. And that was actually New Line Cinema. So New Line Cinema picked them up halfway through their production stage and said that they were going to distribute the film for them. So lucky them, they actually picked a good one that kind of put them on the map um, and helped turn some things around for them. So that, you know, ended up being one of their highest grossing films at the time. Um, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. There was a reboot of the Ninja Turtles in 2014. Um, I haven't, I think, yeah, I did see that. I did see the 2014 version. I mean, I'm not going to say it's good or bad because, um, you know, I have nostalgia for the 90s, so it's just a different era. But also, with the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, it spawned two more, um, kind of like two more follow-up movies. Um, one was, the second one is Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Secret of the Ooze. And the third one was just Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 3. So um, you had 1990 was the original, 1991 was the second one, and 93 came Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 3. So it was pretty successful. The first one was um, the highest grossing in the series until the 2014 reboot, which was pretty cool. But yeah, I, I really love this movie. Um, you should check it out. But yeah, I highly recommend checking it out, giving it a watch. It's definitely unique and definitely something that's cool to see from the 90s and, you know, how the practical effects work. So thank you guys so much for joining me. I look forward to seeing you guys on Saturday with Roshi for his next anime follow-up. Um, thank you guys for tuning in. Bye. See you later.